Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody in calculus land doing today? Hope you're all doing amazing. Amazingly. Amazing. Okay, so we have a couple of things going on over here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the constant and power rule. Now, as an introduction for this unit, we're going to be talking about derivatives, and we're going to be talking about rules that go along with derivatives. Now, on these rules, I need you all to understand how important this is. I know I'm upside down. Deal with it. On these rules, genius! On these rules, when you're doing your, your calculus stuff, this is for a derivative. Now, some people call these shortcuts. It's not smart to think of these things as shortcuts because while they, they do seem to be a little bit easier than what we've been doing, some of these can get rather complicated. So it's, it's not necessarily a good idea to think of them as shortcuts so much as they are a different way to do things. And in some instances, a much better way to do things. Okay, let's do it. Bam! So today we're going to be talking about the constant and the power rule. The constant rule deals with when you have a constant such as this. If you have f of x is c, what's the derivative of f of x? If you, have the, if you have a constant, then the derivative of a constant, what's the slope of that line? What's the slope of a horizontal line? That's what it's asking here. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Well, the slope is zero, isn't it? So the constant rule, remember d over dx is a derivative with respect to x. So dy over dx, the derivative of a constant is always going to be zero. A constant number is just a flat line. So the derivative of a constant will always be zero. And a couple of examples of that. If you had f of x is 42, then f prime of x is zero, right? It's zero. Okay, so going down, to, going down the chain here, a power rule. Now, this is the one everybody likes. The power rule says if I take a derivative with respect to x, so I'm taking a derivative of this guy right here. I'm going to take this exponent, and I'm going to drop it in front of here. So now it's n times x, and I'm going to subtract 1 from the power, n minus 1. Okay, an example of that, let's say you've got f of x is 4x to the third power. Right? I drop my exponent and multiply it to what's existing. So this is going to be f prime of x is 3 times 4x. I drop that 3 down and take 1 away from my exponent. 12x squared. Okay, if that 4 wasn't there, let me give you another one. Let's say that f of x, just very simple, is x cubed. Then f prime of x, I'm going to drop my power, 3x, and take 1 away from my exponent, 3x squared. This is the one everybody likes because it's, it makes our job much, much quicker. Again, it's not necessarily a shortcut because it doesn't always work. A shortcut is something that always works. This one doesn't necessarily always work. So let me give you some examples here. It says find the derivative of 2x squared plus 3x minus 6. So my 2 gets dropped down. So f prime of x is 2 times 2 x to the first power plus 3 x if you drop your 1 down and take 1 away that's x to the 0 isn't it and then minus 6 well what's the derivative of a constant that's 0 
So simplify it here. 4x plus 3, because x to the 0 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 4x plus 3. Now some of you may have already picked this up. I'm going to take you back to section, or to section 21. You guys may remember this guy. Uh, section 21, where we talked about the definition of a derivative, the formal definition of a derivative. We came up with this question that said, find the derivative of this using the formal definition. And we had to do all of that, right? Oh my gosh. But what if we just use the power rule? How about 2x plus 2? That x will go away. 2x plus 2? Ba -da -da -da, ba -da -da. <gasps> 2x plus 2. You're telling me that we could have learned this rule back here and skipped all of this. Blah, blah, blah. Rabble, 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 rabble. Anyways. Now we got all that out of our system. Remember that if the, if the test is asking for the formal definition, this is what will not get you credit. If I ask you to find the, de the derivative, using the definition of a derivative, you have to do it old school way, long way. If I just tell you to find the derivative, bam, there it is. Okay, find the derivative of 1 over x squared. The first thing I would do on these, anytime I see a fraction, I try and rewrite it. For example, uh, f of x, I can rewrite this as x to the negative 2, right? If I wanted to rewrite it, take my x squared, get rid of the whole fraction-y business. To raise this to the top, all I have to do is make my exponent negative. And then the derivative is pretty simple. f prime of x, drop down the negative 2 x and take one away to the negative 3 and then simplify it so you've got negative 2 over x to the third drop the power take one away now this one since I happen to be taking one away from a negative it's just negative 2 minus 1 negative 3 and then move that back to the bottom easy way to deal with fractions there much, much easier than, than a lot of people are used to. Down here, uh, y is equal to negative x to the fourth over 2 plus 3x to the third minus 2x, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's actually set this thing up as a derivative here. First, I would recommend writing this as negative 1 half times x to the fourth. Let's see what happens. y prime is equal to I have my negative one half, right? Negative one half from here. Drop your four down. So times four, x to the third, take one away. Plus three times three, x to the second, take one away. Minus two, x to the zero. Now, You'll learn eventually you don't have to write this because it's just one. I'm only doing it this time because it's nicer. Y prime is, this will be negative 2x to the third plus 9x squared minus 2. Imagine trying to use the definition of a derivative for this guy. X to the fourth, are you kidding me? X to the fourth x plus delta x times 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 x plus delta x whatever four times oh my gosh shoot me in the face right now probably shouldn't have said that example number four <laughs> sorry write the equation sorry if that was insensitive shoot uh example four write the equation of the tangent line to f of x is 2x to the fourth plus three Okay, so first, equation of a tangent line. I needs a point, and I needs a slot. I need a point, and I need a slot. 
Now they give me the x value at 2. So I'm going to find f of 2. I'm going to find that f of 2. 2 times 2 to the 4th plus 3. That 2 to the 4th is 16 times 2 is 32 plus 3 is 35. So F O 2 is 35. So your point is 2 comma 35. Yay! I have a point. Now I need the slop. To find the slop, I'm on derivative. Find that derivative. 4 times 2 is 8x to the 3rd. This will go to 0. Right? And I need to find the slope at 2. So I'm going to plug a 2 in. 8 times 2 cubed. F prime of 2 is 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 8 is 64. That good right there. So it's y minus y1, which is 35, equals your schlop, 64, times x minus x1. Ba -da -da -da, ba -da -da. Not bad, is it? Just got to remember to drop your power. Drop your power, son. Drop it real good. Example 5. Write the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function. f of x equals 1 over... Holy mess, Batman. Where x is 8. I want the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function where x is 8. Oh my gosh. First thing I'm going to do is rewrite f of x. I'm going to get rid of all this mess right here. I'm going to call that 1 half, 1 over 2. x squared... With the cube root on it, isn't that x to the two-thirds power? If you've forgotten that, remember that the cube root of x squared is x squared times 1 over 3. That's how we do cube roots, which is x to the two-thirds power. Well, that makes it a lot easier now. Let me, let me not skip skip steps here. How about that? Let me not skip steps. So I have a feeling there's someone sitting at home going, what? So how about 1 over 2x to the 2 thirds power? Make sense? Okay. So that's going to be 1 half x to the negative 2 thirds. How about that? A little bit better? Okay. So now I can use the power rule. So now I can use the power rule. And I'm going to rule the power. So I've got a... I need to find my point. First, I need a point and a slot. Point is f of 8. Plug your 8 in here. Right? 1 over 2 cube root of 8 squared. Holy moly. Uh, 8 squared is 64, cube root of 64 is 4, so it's 1 over 2 times 4, which is 1 over 8. So my point is 8, 1 8, 1 8, rather. Then you have a slope is where your derivative comes in. F prime of x. Now this guy up here, all right, I'm going to keep my 1 half. and bring this guy down times negative two-thirds x and if I take negative two-thirds minus one so minus three over three I get negative five-thirds <gasps> okay rewriting that here this is negative two over six which is one-third right these will simplify so one and one, that's one third. So I've got a negative one third, one over three, and then I'm gonna take this down here and it's x to the five thirds. Holy moly, right? I want the slope at that point, at eight. So I'm actually gonna